word nerds happy sunday and welcome to our monthly book club this month we are talking about the queen of the tearling by erica johansson johansson one of those um this is an adult fantasy high fantasy ish uh, not a global fantasy it's an adult fantasy book and i think we're gonna have some mixed opinions so let's jump in with our ratings emma you are first oh no i'm <laughs> <laughs> uh I'm yeah. like debating for the last 24 hours since I finished this book what I should rate it. Go with your heart. I think it's like, <laughs> like sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's probably like two and a half stars for me. I do not like this book. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> like it's really hard for me to think of anything that I liked about it. Did you finish it or no? Yeah, I finished it yesterday. Okay. Oh, yeah. By the right, way, let's mix it up. Given on <laughs> so. uh, Rachel? Uh, I gave the first one four out of five. Um, I liked the unlikable main character, and I liked a lot of the cliches that she wrote out of. Um, you know, having like the most beautiful queen and the chosen one. and um, But I do understand why a lot of people didn't like it because it took me a while to get into this book because it was very weird um and this like the second and third get even weirder mm -hmm. uh but i personally enjoyed it and megan um <laughs> so i'm gonna say three um it took a long time to come to that uh when i first finished uh reading it i didn't rate it on goodreads so i was like i don't know i need time to think <laughs> Um, but in the end, I feel like it was fine. There were things that I know I didn't like because it just like wasn't for me. And then there were things that I found incredibly frustrating <laughs> um, that I'm sure we'll get into. And there were a couple things that I did like. So um, I'm sure we'll talk about all of those things. I think for me, it was like a four and a half star. I really liked, I don't know. I just like the here's how to run a kingdom. Like, like just we're in a like super stressful situation and have to go from the day to day stuff of rebuilding this kingdom that is in a pretty dire circumstances. I just found that stuff interesting. Kind of like mm -hmm. the court politics, but without much of the court stuff of just like, mm -hmm. we've got the queen and she's pretty much calling the shots, but I liked that stuff. And I don't see a lot of books that do that same kind of thing. I didn't like the, I don't know what to call them. Flashbacks, I guess. I don't know. It ends up being really complicated by the time you get to the last book. Yeah, the those aren't those but, aren't in the first book. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah there, I, they start coming the second one. Second one. Oh, yeah. okay. In that case, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's yeah, there were some slower bits for me. Like it wasn't a perfect five star, but I really liked it. I read it twice, but I do have trouble remembering the specifics of what happened. So I've been yeah. doing caps. It's also been That's a while because time. nothing happened. <laughs> she made one decision the whole book. Oh, see, it's been a while since I've read this, so you guys are just gonna roast this, and I'm gonna be like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I try so like, hard not to roast yeah. it because, like, I know there are pros and cons. But... Yeah. I really tried to get out like all of my venting to Megan yesterday when I finished it, so that I wouldn't vent too much in the chat. I don't know. That's what book clubs for. It's not like I, mm -hmm. I'd feel worse about it if it was like a book that hadn't done very well, and yeah. the author is not counting on us for good reviews. If it was some like super nice author that I love, but I don't know anything about Erica Johansson, so I'm sure she's great. Her book was not for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, okay. it's a it's a very weird book um especially the first one you're like what is happening like where is this going i don't understand anything the second book it's even weirder um <laughs> and then in the third book she i would say she actually did a good job of wrapping up the series um it's just very strange and it's very weird so i understand why people don't yeah. like it because it's very outside the box um can we I start with it. the setting it's very unique <laughs> yes which is another thing that i'm gonna try really hard because i don't remember like what exactly like where the cutoff is for all these books and so book um, one ends with um they are trying to sneak the like slave trade thing into being again and so she okay. shows up and she's like i'm gonna stop them i don't know how but i'm gonna do it and then the guy who is like, you should love me because I didn't rape you while you were sleeping. Oh, yeah. um, she's like, oh yeah, I do love you. 
um, <laughs> he's like, you're now ready. And he gives her the second stone. Right. And they like yeah. combine and she just wrecks the them. <laughs> yes. Okay. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the thing with that is like, it's, yeah. Um, the world is just very strange because it's like some things are modern. Like there's like, oh, we have electric lamps and, but we also live in a medieval kind of town. And like, that was hard for me to get into as well. Yeah. I can um, see how it could be like, a, it's a cool idea. I don't think it's done super well. And I think it felt very unnecessary, at mm. least within the first book. I was like, what's the point? Why, like, why not just make it a fantasy? <laughs> yeah. I, that know. ends up being explained by the end of the series. Yeah, though, I but I feel like, like yeah. part of Yeah, but I do feel like it's a weakness for the whole first book to be like, what was even the point of this setting? You know, like, I don't know. I would have liked there to be a little bit more. Like, I feel like, yeah. yeah. I'm, it has I'm not sure. super interesting. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm not sure if she just you know just to write it like wrote it like that and then her agent was like you need to make mm -hmm. this all make sense or reasons. if she like had yeah or if she had like a, a three book structure like already planned out because it is very outside of the box even though it does like get explained later it's still very outside the box yeah and this book does feel like one of the pros and cons i feel like to me as someone who hasn't read the whole series i've only read the first book um, so it's probably like a series strength, but a book one weakness is that it does feel like a first act. Like, yes. like it is just a first act to something that mm -hmm. was obviously meant to be a series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it like can stand on its own at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually really love the second book, just saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard really good things about the second book, and then I've heard... I read about the ending because I knew I was yeah. not going to read it. And so I've seen people who like loved and people who hated the ending. Yeah. But we won't I, spoil books two or three for those of you yeah. watching who haven't read it yet and want to. I think we mostly just have Anne Griswold who rated it one star. So it's probably not yeah. a huge concern. Since <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we have seven people, which is pretty solid for a book club. True. Who are here. So welcome, seven people who may or may not have read the book. One of them's me. Oh, right. <laughs> six people. Hello, six people. <laughs> um, yeah, I found the setting really, really interesting. And I, I assume that later books you get a lot more because I do know that in later books you get a lot more of the history of the tearling. And mm -hmm. I wish we'd gotten more of that in book one because there were moments where I felt like... Um, uh, it just felt a little uneven. Like Rachel said with the, they have electricity, but the only medicine they have is birth control. <laughs> and, or um, she has like the works of JK Rowling and a book of grim fairy tales and stuff. But she says that the, the red headed girl is telling a story that she's never heard before about a princess with really long hair and a prince who climbs up it. And it's like, you have Harry Potter and all of Grimm's fairy tales, but you don't know Rapunzel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think uh, that was, actually, yeah, that was one of the things that like the series overall did really well, but the first book didn't where there wasn't quite enough. Because if I remember correctly, they do mention in the first one that they, they found another continent that had magic. And I was okay, like, yeah, oh, that was okay. my other question was like, so this is a believable future that has magic, but not medicine. And I, I'm sure <laughs> yeah, you have exactly. a reason. I know you have one because you couldn't get away with not having one. Yeah, what did, she okay, mention, so did she mention in this book? This isn't really a spoiler. I, because I read about the other books now, I don't remember if this is mentioned in this one or not. But the whole thing is supposed to be like they brought doctors yeah, but like the ship, the doctors, they, they were like, let's put all of the doctors on one yeah, ship. On one. That's yeah. a good <laughs> plan. And then, and then that ship's capsized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, I, I do think link. all of it with like the books and stuff, that is all super explained and it is kind of the twist at the end. So you can't like half explain it. Yeah. So. It's a really like, I, I can't swear really on this channel, but like it's a really, <laughs> like it's a mind warp. Oh my God. At the end of it, it's like, it's so weird that you like, need to take a minute to like fully comprehend what just happened. <laughs> See, I think um, I liked the end the least of all the things. I mostly remember being confused, but we won't. We'll get into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The end of that book was very, very strange. But, I, I was also very confused as what was going on and like who was going where and what have you. Yeah, I did. I really liked. Um, 
in this book, all of the like jumping around to the different characters. Um, and it kind of like goes along with like all the intrigue or whatever, just like getting to see all the different parts of the kingdom, um, at least in like the social classes or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I found that very I always like I liked all of the scenes that were from characters other than Kelsey's points of view a lot better <laughs> than all the stuff. I don't like Kelsey. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, like, what do you guys think of her? Because, like, I, I liked the fact that she was an unlikable character, but I didn't really like her. See, I, I wish don't... that the stones had devoured her. Yeah. And <laughs> I, w- I wish the Caden had found her at the very beginning and just assassinated her. Wow. <laughs> and then, like, uh-huh. I feel like she's not, like, I don't want to call her unlikable because I feel like there's, like, there can be good things about unlikable characters. Like I support there being unlikable like characters. Uh-oh. Not to hear what she has to say. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. um, I think I feel oh, similarly no. to what she was going to say, which is that. Oh, like, Emma, you're back. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> for a minute. You froze, so we didn't okay. get any of it. <laughs> Female character. Oh no. Oh no, it's all just yours. <laughs> oh there, you're moving, okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously don't want you to make that point. Um, I think I felt similarly to what I think you were going to say. Um, I felt like she was unlikable, but it didn't feel super intentional. <laughs> Like, it felt like we were supposed to be rooting for her always, but she would do things like, um, I don't know, like, there's a place for girls who are fierce and stuff, but she would do things like she saw that older woman and thought that she couldn't possibly have kids because any child would be cannibalized by her womb because the woman was older and looked like she cared about her appearance. (laughs) And... (laughs) Because obviously, so, if you can't bear children, it's because you're an awful person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if only that was true, there would be a lot less terrible people in the world. <laughs> and just, like, the general... It, in a lot of ways, it was, like, this obsession she had with people's appearances. Yeah. Like, if someone was pretty, she hated them. If someone was a bad guy, they were fat. Like, the bad guys were always described as fat. And, like... Those were things that felt more problematic to me than just like, I'm trying to make this character unlikable to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it definitely felt like you were supposed to like her. Like I feel like everybody in the story was like, except for the bad guys. Everyone like, was like, you're so amazing. amazing. We're immediately loyal to you. And I was like, I would not be loyal to her. <laughs> She's awful. <laughs> like, I think I, I get where it was going because I, I kind of got the impression that it was like, especially over the series, like actually gains confidence and stuff. Like at the very beginning, she's very much so like, I'm ugly and everyone's like hey guess what you're ugly and she's like yeah I know I guess I'm ugly so but then she's still going like I'm gonna be fierce I'm gonna be strong instead of being you know pretty and and not doing anything so you're supposed to be like oh I like you because you know you've decided that you're gonna be strong anyways but yeah then she did have a bit of a bias against pretty people or just anybody else that was not like ugly I don't know it was kind of weird and then they have like this because they have like the super hot assassin dude Whose name I can't remember. So obsessed with him. I thought he was really old. I was very confused. I was under the impression he's in his fifties. Oh, I'm. I was kind of weird because I'm like, are they supposed to fall in love? Like, I don't get it. So I was like, I'm. Do I like you? Not like, not really. You're kind of an awful guy. Mm -hmm. And then also like, she's kind of an awful girl. But like, I'm supposed to like both of you, and I'm supposed to like you together. But like it's supposed to be like a pining love thing. I don't, it was it was weird. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think didn't I was supposed it. to like him. I, I read it as like kind of an unhealthy obsession. I read him as okay, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. very easily. Like in like a way that I understood a lot more. Mm-hmm. I'm also trying to remember if the like if the immediately loyal thing. Because I thought when they first got her, it was like you're probably gonna die, but we're supposed to go get you. And then she like freed. There was some still of that, become yeah. loyal to her pretty quickly though. Mm-hmm. Well, I think everyone's well, just... the alternative. Weird. Everyone in that kingdom is terrible. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I don't get, like, why all of them were, like, so loyal to her mother that they, like, wouldn't tell her what was going on when her mother was, like, a terrible queen. I'm like, mm-hmm. why are you so loyal? They're, like, like oh, we're not going to prepare this girl for, like, the reality of what's happening in her kingdom because, like, her dead mom told us not to. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> like, we're just going to have her live in the woods for a while. 
I feel like it was a really convenient <laughs> plot device so that like- Because there was so much information. And so that Kelsey would be surprised and all this stuff and it didn't feel realistic. Like really mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I don't get why Carlin would be like loyal to this like terrible queen when Carlin's this like progressive yeah. liberal. Like why is she even like upholding like a bloodline monarchy? I don't understand it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, did we ever find out where she got the scar? No. Because she had to have the necklaces and the scar. No, no, it never says. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that, someone that, did it comes it. up at some point. Yeah. I don't think it was super relevant. It was just kind of a stab a baby they, like, so you can recognize it later. Baby? Yeah, maybe. I could be remembering that wrong. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah, I think it's just kind of like implied that before she was like taken away, they like branded her so that they could like identify her later. Mm -hmm. But they never say like who it was who did it. I would guess one of the guards. <laughs> they would Hopefully do it in the wrong time so. <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something Megan kind of touched on is like, a thing that really bothered me was Kelsey's like treatment, like the entire thing with Lady Andrews, who is like kind of the older, really stuck up woman. But like the first time we meet Lady Andrews, like Kelsey bases all of her like assumptions of her just on the fact that she has like a ridiculous hairstyle and like legitimately like tells people later like, oh, we don't need someone like her on our side because her hair is ridiculous. I'm like, you know nothing about her. And like as a reader, I think you're supposed to be like, oh yeah, this lady's ridiculous. And then like, yeah, mm. later when, when we get another scene with her, and you do find out that Lady Andrews is not a great person, but like Kelsey you don't saying know that things, at first. yeah, and Casey selling, Casey's Kelsey saying things or thinking things about like, oh yeah, any like child in her womb would be cannibalized, and like she also Lady Andrews is the one that Kelsey is like, um, it, even worse than being ugly is like being ugly and thinking you're beautiful. I'm like, what? <laughs> How dare someone like have some self esteem? And then she also um, says something to the to Lady Andrews. Um, when she's like, oh, you have no, like, stake in this, you have nothing to fear from the, like, selection thing or whatever. Um, and she's like, because, like, you aren't build, built for hard labor and no one would want to have sex with you. So, like, oh, yes, no one would rape her as a slave because she's kind of older and not that pretty. Sure. Like, nothing to fear. Uh, there's a couple of, like, implications of, like, oh, if you're ugly, you won't get raped kind of thing, where I was like, uh... I mean, that's straight up what what's his butt said to Kelsey yeah. <laughs> when yeah. she came to from being mm -hmm. unconscious for a while. Yeah. She was like, notice she'd been changed, and he was like, don't worry, I didn't touch you. You're way too ugly. Yeah. I don't remember any of that. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's straight up that. I also I'm marked so the part... <laughs> I also marked, I marked things that I really hated. Um, when she's like leaving the fetch at the, the fetch. beginning. That's oh, a, yeah, stop that's trying to make fetch happen. Um, he's, like, he's like, I've given you a gift and she doesn't know what it is or whatever. He's like, I expect you to keep it safe. And she's like, great God, tell me you didn't impregnate me while I slept. And he like laughs and I'm like, are they laughing over a rape joke? Like, yeah. I'm uncomfortable with this. Like, Delightful. Yeah. No, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like, if, I was going to say for the um, thing where she's, like, thinking everyone's who's vain is, you know, terrible or whatever. Like, I kind of get it as she's really not been exposed to anything. So she's that, like, she's 19. She's going to be that teenage girl that's, like, oh, you know, being moody and, like, judgy and whatever to everybody. But then also growing up in the cabin with Carlin and the other Barty. person whose name I can't remember. Um, like, they're, Barty. thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. They're so good. Um, but like, didn't if they would have like you know talked to her about that or been she like, did hey, have, like, like bad like incidents where like they definitely talk about Carlin giving her some of those ideas that like vanity is basically the worst thing possible. Like she puts on a pretty dress and Carlin like burns it in front of her or something. Oh, that sounds yeah, somewhat familiar. Because yeah. of the, like, ridiculous people thing and judging her just off of her hairdo or whatever. I read that kind of, like, Katniss and people at the Capitol. Like, she's not going to stop mm -hmm. and get to know those people before she realizes mm -hmm. yeah, they right. they don't have the same priorities as she does. I guess it's just, like, yeah. Yeah. for a character that's supposed to be, like, amazing and, like, thinking of the people. I don't know. It's just but for the way her character, you're told you're supposed, told to, you're supposed to feel about her character. It just didn't like line up for me. And for a character who consistently faces prejudice for being ugly, despite the fact that all descriptions of her would lead me to believe that she's actually super hot. 
She's like, I oh, my... Really. She's like, oh, my dark complexion and my startling green eyes. And I'm like, I'm not thin, but I'm not, like, too big. And I'm not this and I'm not that. Mm. And so they keep That's, saying, like, oh, she's so ugly. But then every physical description we get, I'm like, are you? I guess are I, just, you? I feel like, like there's not enough description to base it on. Because, like, dark complexion, like, you could be pretty or ugly. Like, it doesn't really say anything about, like, it would be nice to be like, oh, her eyes are super far apart. She's got, like. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know. Point, you don't really get enough to go on money, other yeah. than people saying she's ugly. Yeah, I think they say that she has like a heavy jaw at some point. And I do remember yeah. it being like, I'm not thin, but I like, you know, I'm not like super fat, but like I'm not thin either. And like I'm like tall I have a healthy and like. <laughs> yeah, <what> we're right. <laughs> so like I never thought that she was pretty, but I never thought that she was like a swamp donkey. You know what I mean? But like <laughs> maybe in. Especially That's in the opposite. <laughs> pretty to swamp talking. Yes, but like I never thought that like in you know maybe it's like court people are like super vain and super pretty. Maybe. So I, but maybe that's it. But like yeah. I thought at most she was just, just plain. Like. Yeah, I don't know. I found myself getting so frustrated with the treatment of fat people in the book, mm -hmm. and like like I said before, like all the bad guys except for the Red Queen herself were described as being fat. When Kelsey talks about being not pretty, her weight is always something she thinks about. And I didn't feel like there was enough about the world to make me believe that that would be like society's huge priority. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it just, I don't know, I found it incredibly frustrating. It was just like every time it came up, it was like, this is bad. And it was never challenged. Just no, like I, how I it was never a challenge. Oh, go ahead. I, I just I never remember all the bad guys being fat. Like I'm I remember it being like a couple characters were. I remember some like disposable guard was talking about how he was chubby because he was like eating on his um like during one of his shifts. But like I don't remember any of the bad guys being Most fat. Of the bad I'm guys trying to remember who the bad guys are. It's like yeah. the uncle. So like her uncle and Thorn is the guy who's like trying to do the slavery. I feel oh. like they're they're all just kind of like described as being like kind of like gluttonous, eat too much, they're like mm. stomach is straining against their clothes kind of thing. Oh. Yeah. Kind of description. And it's just and like her, anyone she came against who like didn't like her basically. Cause there weren't that many straight up villains, but it was like mm -hmm. if she came across someone who she didn't like that much, I started like keeping a tally of it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> or, it was a lot. Yeah. And her uncle is like described like he's like a villain caricature. He has like a curly must like or, or curly thin beard and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. I loved her wrecking his life though. I yeah, will that say was, that. Oh, so yeah. good. That was, was like worst. one of the good parts of the book. Yeah, with all of yeah. his I don't is this in the first book with like all of his concubines? Yeah. yeah. It's just like F, like F some over just, completely. Like, them. <laughs> Although of course so that, good. Wasn't, that wasn't even Kelsey. Kelsey was unconscious during that. That was Lazarus, who did all of that to him. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. even remember. Like, she oh, wakes yeah. up and, like, and she's like, what did you do to my uncle? Like, she finds out afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she and then she, like, something. stands up for the redheaded concubine. Yeah. I did mm -hmm. like that. It was There's also the husband of, of that one woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, yeah what's her name? What's her name? Andalee. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really liked her name. That was pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I liked Andalee and Marguerite. Like, I felt like, yes. I was like, finally some, like, positive female relationships here. <laughs> I was fascinated by Andalee. Like, I wanted a lot more of her, and I assume you can get a lot more in the later books. I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to have her there story. for a while. Yeah, you get, like, hints that she has powers, and just, like, she was better at telling when something bad was going to happen than Lazarus. Like, <laughs> Lazarus oh, is all like, he's number one at finding bad guys, and then he just Never like lets an assassin into her bathroom, and <laughs> Angela is the one who's like, something bad is gonna happen. Yeah, I, <laughs> I forgot like, about the bathroom. I had mixed oh, feelings. The bathroom was so good. Yeah, I had mixed <laughs> feelings about Lazarus because like there were things I really liked about him, but then yeah, like he's supposed to be, like have this like special power where he can like read people and tell who's good and not and one of his guards is like a heroin addict and he has no <laughs> idea. <laughs> like what? This does <laughs> not make sense. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, Mern was able to hide it by like being in withdrawal all the time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wouldn't he have noticed that? <laughs> he was yeah. in withdrawal? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was weird. 
I definitely liked what he added as like a like a secondary father figure almost because she does lose Barty and Carlin and doesn't realize that they're gonna die. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, sorry, that's another thing altogether, but I definitely liked their relationship and I felt like it had good developments too. Like there were a lot of things that I didn't necessarily feel were super well developed or thought out, but I felt like their relationship was one of them. Like I liked how she would call him Lazarus, the thought of him as Mace, and just like all those really interesting contradictions when you're forced to be close with someone who you don't really know and you have to totally rely on. Yeah, well, I thought the relationship building especially was interesting because when you think about it, like, you know, she's like kind of awful or she's not, you know, the smartest or she doesn't have the, you know, the greatest allies or whatever, but she's also just a 19 year old that has no idea what she's doing. And then she's just going to run a kingdom. So, like, that was kind of interesting to see how she was thinking about it as, like, despite the fact that she's also had lessons and she knows that her mother was a queen and she's been somewhat prepared for this. Like, she really isn't. So I think that's, it was cool to read along with that being like, oh, what would I do in that situation? Or she, like, yeah. wants to do something, but then everyone else is like, no, that's bad in the long run. And she's like, but I want to do it now. And so you have, like, the impulsiveness of, like, a teenager. But then you also have, like she's the queen like you have that upper standard now that you like have to be at and you have to think about everyone in the castle you have to think about the, the rich people and the poor people and like long-term decisions and what you're gonna yeah. do with the freaking red queen which we haven't even talked about mm -hmm. yet so yeah, yeah. just like yeah. realizing that like these aren't books anymore when you make this decision mm -hmm. real people are gonna be affected and not just like the rich people getting like knocked down a peg but also like she chooses to save these slaves and has to actually realize and consider the fact that um, now all these people could die anyway because she's bringing this war on and deciding like what is more important, like mm -hmm. fighting a war now or delaying it basically mm -hmm. in the name of saving people's lives. And I would have like really liked to see more of that, of like the politics and her learning to rule and everything. But like, I still felt like she barely did anything even like politics wise. Like she met with some people and like stopped the slave trade. And I was like, all she did knows. So even like more politics would have been- Stop the slave cool. trade, all she that. did. That's a I pretty know, that's big a thing. thing. That's <laughs> a big thing. It's literally, it's the only decision she makes. <laughs> like she And we don't see any consequences from it in book one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, there's a lot of consequences for it. <laughs> we don't see any. I'm book. certain there are, yeah. but we don't see any in book one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, deciding to end the slave trade was the only, I feel like, real action that like, she proactive. made in the entire book. And obviously, it was like a huge decision, and a lot of stuff was riding on it, but like, all the stuff that happened in the climax, it was just based on this decision she made a hundred pages in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like nothing really compounded, I guess, to make it a really explosive ending, despite the fact that it was literally an explosive <laughs> ending <laughs> with those stone thingies. Which also bothered me that it was just like, I just had these magic stones and I'm gonna solve everything with them. I don't even know how to use them, but yeah, I I like, what is happening right now? <laughs> I could when. get on board with the stones, maybe, if I hadn't felt quite so much like the fetch had just held on to them until we needed mm -hmm. the book to end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I um, definitely feel like the Red Queen is a super pointless villain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just like stands around in her chambers like raping slaves all the time that's all she does the entire book and being like and being like oh i can't find this girl even though i have all this magic and i'm like really you've had like 19 years to find her <laughs> and she was just in the cabin in the woods in like a small kingdom <laughs> yeah i don't exactly. understand i don't know i felt like she was just very like we were told to be really scared of her but i never felt scared of her like nothing ever like actually made yeah her, her. her there like there was a, a part of her that I really liked, which I honestly can't remember if it's in the first one or if it's in later books. Do we meet the demon character in the first book? Briefly okay. at the end, yeah. Okay, I like the demon character in her. I think that's a really interesting relationship or like whatever the heck's going on there. And I like the idea that like she is, like she has the ability to take over the other kingdoms, but I'm just like, girl, what are you doing? Like you have all this time and it's 
and money and magic and you're just sitting over here like having chats with your demon friend like what's going on like what are you doing like just start already just start yeah. the war i don't yeah, care she was, like, do she was something. taking no action she was just like waiting for other people to do things for her and yeah. like complaining about yeah. it not getting done like that's all she did the whole book and the demon kind of like gave a hint that maybe there was a reason mm -hmm. why she was not moving at all for an entire book but again like <laughs> it didn't come in until the very, very end of the book. And so I just, I would have loved a little bit more tension. And I get that maybe this is in part like a, like an adult high fantasy versus like a young adult or a middle grade high fantasy where things tend to like move a lot faster. faster. And so this, it was very like buildy, uppy. <laughs> I'm sure in later books it gets really epic, but as a standalone, like, it just didn't catch me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of it is explained later. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, which is unfortunate because I, I guess, you know, with you guys, you probably wouldn't read the sequel. I know a lot of people will probably be put off with the sequel, which sucks because the sequel and the, the th I mean, the third one's like, okay. But like, mm -hmm. it explains a lot more. It has some really great scenes, but I know a lot of people are going to be so put off by the first one that they're going to be like, we'll screw the rest of it. Um, which is unfortunate. I don't know so I wish like, she had like an average of four stars. Like four oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's a well-reviewed book. It's just mm -hmm. not for everybody. It definitely. Yeah. I don't think it didn't do as well as the publishers expected it to. Because I remember when this book came out, and there was a ton of buzz around yeah, it. Yeah, they, they were like, it's going to be this money, yeah. and it's going to be a movie with Emma Watson and all this stuff. And oh like, yeah, I forgot about that. That movie is yeah. not going to happen. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no news on that. Because um, I don't think it sold as well as they thought it would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of that is that I feel like the marketing was a little weird. Like, they were like, YA fans will love this, but it's not mm -hmm. YA. I don't consider it YA. I don't shelve it with YA. But, mm -hmm. like, and I get, like, why. Because it is structured a little differently than a YA book would be. And the pacing yeah. is different. But I feel like, especially when this book came out that was kind of to its detriment that they didn't just start shelving it with the YA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, again, well, like when I'm trying to think like when we have like, I work at a bookstore for everyone that doesn't know. And when we have um, like teen, like two for 20 title deals, or, you know, when we have uh, like featured teen titles, we'll have Queen of the Tearling in there, but I don't consider it a teen novel at all. It's, it's definitely like shelved an adult at the bookstores here. It is. Yeah. But it's yeah, shelved it's an adult. adult in my store but we sell it as like a teen title in you like promo um, it that way yeah. promos yeah which is kind of weird but like also you could say like jay christoph never night is definitely not a teen novel but sometimes people will think it is because the main character's 17 and then also like akotar which is like sarah j mass is like court of thrones and roses which is definitely not in a YA, YA novel <laughs> but it's shelved in ya so like i think those like what are, I guess they're technically new adult like fantasy stuff. They just don't yeah. really know how to market them properly, um, and they're like, "Oh, well, it's like close enough to the YA stuff, so I guess we'll put it there." But then maybe other people are like, "No, no, no, like that's you know maybe put it yeah. put it with regular ones." People like want it to be you know adult fantasy or what have you, and like that's I almost like, feel like you have pick to one. <laughs> figure yeah pick one figure out who the fans are like Akotar. They put it in YA because that's where her fans are, and they know the fans are going to pick it up. And kind of the same with Jay Kristoff. Like, a ton of his fans are YA, so it makes sense that you're going to try and market it to those fans, too, even if it's a lot darker and has much more adult structure and themes. Yeah. yeah. And I definitely think something can be published and shelved in one thing and still marketed in another market, oh, too. Like I think that's yeah. definitely a valid thing. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely think, think it's of... funny that Emma Watson was supposed to play her, this ugly <laughs> character. Yeah, right? When they were like, yeah, Emma Watson was a character. Like, what? <laughs> no? How? Where? What? <laughs> no. She's <laughs> very upset about that casting choice. <laughs> they never would have made a movie with a remotely unattractive lead uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, no, of course. Do those people even exist <laughs> in Hollywood? <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> um, we had a question from N. Griswold. Uh, just double checking did the uncle die and yes he did and i actually really liked that death because mm -hmm. it was from his point of view yeah. and it stopped mid-sentence and i loved that oh, i got like chills when it happened and then we had another question uh 
from Tabitha. Do you think there was enough conflict in each chapter? To me, it felt kind of wandering. Well, the chapters were like 50 pages long. So <laughs> they were very long chapters. <laughs> so sure. long. And there were tons of scene breaks too. So I'm like, why couldn't you have like broken up the chapters just a little bit more? Like I get that it's adult, but like Game of Thrones chapters are shorter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I they remember. definitely, the chapters definitely related. There was always a chunk of fast forward history at the beginning. So it was like a chapter about the Glynn Queen, but it was like obvious that that was Kelsey. Um, and so it was kind of like we were reading a little bit of history and then the next 50 pages would relate to that. And so it was kind of like there were a lot of, for a book that wasn't like super high action, there were a lot of peaks and stuff mm -hmm. like throughout so it wasn't quite so much like one single arc for the chapter you know those little like history snippets at the beginning of the chapters without spoiling the rest of the series i will say that since i know how the last book ends a lot of those little history excerpts don't make sense in the context of the full series mm. <laughs> so, yeah about that <laughs> You know, it makes me wonder if there's merit to Rachel's theory of like her publisher or whatever made her change kind of what she wanted to do to make things kind of make sense, but then also not make sense in areas. Yeah, exactly. areas but, yeah. yeah. I, have, I have issues with the way the series ends. When I found out how it ended, I was like, I don't care how much I like this book, I'm not reading the rest of the series. Well, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like something. So, like, you, okay. So, like, it's very. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like, how to word this. So, like, it's very, again, outside of the box. It's very odd. It's very strange. It's a big mashup of genres. Um, and I I think it would have been better if she had, like, picked one. But maybe the idea she had, she's like, I want to make it this, like, fantasy, but also, like, contemporary, but, like, Middle Ages, but also, like, put some sci-fi, and then also, like, some time travel, and then some, like, interdimensional stuff. Just wait till later books, people, if you're anyone that's watching this. Mm -hmm. um, like, maybe she, like, did she want to put all those together? Was she like, I want to, you know, transcend genres and put, like, contemporary stuff in a middle-aged set, or middle-aged, well, I guess, yeah, middle-aged, that works. Yeah. Like, middle-aged setting, like, I want to do that. Maybe that'll be, like, different and cool and make people pay attention to it. Um, but then, when she was writing it, the publishers were like, um, uh, uh, can we, like, change or, like, just can we figure out something maybe it's like too much or too little and she was like um don't worry about it i totally meant to do that it like all makes sense later it's just really weird um or if publishers were like look man this is so strange we like some aspect of it maybe like the unlikable main character or like we like the part of the the villain or something but like you have to make this a thing and like make it actually work and she's like you know what like screw everything i'm just gonna put everything in here and go all out um mm -hmm. But I, uh, I don't know. I, again, some people are gonna like it, and some people are gonna be like WTF. And yeah, I think it I might have been better if she like tried to condense stuff instead I of like putting everything in there. Yeah, I kind of disagree because I think mean, <laughs> other than the fact that it's like a fantasy world, but it's technically the future, I don't think it's that strange or outside the box. Like I felt like it felt very like typical fantasy. Everybody's oh, okay. sexist and homophobic. At least in <laughs> there's, only, there's only one black character in the entire world. And he's a and... mythical storyteller. Yeah, I and she, has, about that. she legitimately has to be like, oh my gosh, I've never seen a black person before. And she like just And it's like, you've also never seen a hot dude before, but you're fine <laughs> with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> you've only seen Carlin and Barty. Yeah. So I really didn't feel like it was that outside the box. <laughs> Other than okay. the center. So. <laughs> Other than like a actually like the sexist racist thing is actually really interesting that you mentioned that because in the second book that there's a lot of that in it that like pulls from the past mm -hmm. um but like the future past there's like a whole x-men thing that goes on in the second one it's very strange but it's really cool um yeah but like the future past of things the way that like that society has okay we're almost at the end of the chat so what do we say from here on out, if anyone wants to keep reading and doesn't want spoilers, this is your place to say goodnight. <laughs> Where were we? We're pretty much done. Spoils. Kind of stuff. Like vaguely talking around things. So. Yeah. All right. So if yeah, we're gonna out, spoil okay. things. <laughs> we're gonna spoil things for um, what is it? Invasion. Yeah. Invasion. Books two and three. It's all. It's all. Whatever. Okay. 
I'm going to go edit the description so it says what minute we start spoiling things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, um, yeah, in the second one, it's like a we in the okay, so like in the past, which was technically the future, we like found a way to go through like wormholes into other dimensions. And so the Teeling is in this other dimensional world that has magic. And we went there and we brought a bunch of ships with like doctors, the one that sank with like physicists, with like engineers, with like all this random stuff, the like food, da da da. We like made it through the wormhole into this other place and like this is what happened. But that also happened like a couple hundred years ago. But that point of time was like way in the future from now. So in that time before humanity left for the Tierling, um, the world is like, it's very classist. Um, it's very dystopian. It, like everything's run by advertisements and like marketing. Um, everything's very dirty, lots of security systems. But then it also like kind of has like a 1950s feel where like the women stay at home. They don't have autonomy over their own bodies. Like birth control isn't really a thing. Um, like you, if you want to have children, you have to like pay a whole bunch and like you're not like women aren't um, like they don't have rights really. They're just like the housewives that stay at home. And we find out about all this because Kelsey is having flashbacks of a person from her timeline. Like from that's like an ancestor that lived during that future time. And they're like having visions of this person's life. And that lady is like one of the first pioneers that ever came to the Tierling. Um, and like her husband is like this big business guy who is also dealing in something illegal. And I don't think she wants to have a baby, but like he wants to have a baby. And he's also very abusive and like rapes her a whole bunch, which is really creepy and terrifying. Um, and like that world is very racist. It's very classist. It's very, uh, there's like no feminism. There's like absolutely nothing. It's just an awful, cold business like marketing world. Uh, where everything's about money and that actually like it would make sense that if some people brought that mentality over to the tierling when they went through the wormhole that that would stick as a mentality for the rest of the people but that was also like a couple hundred years ago like don't you think that someone would have figured out feminism or racism or something in that time i don't know <laughs> like your past three <laughs> have all like been thing. have like all been queens and women but like Sexism is huge. Ass. Also, sexism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's just like a point okay. where, because like, I feel like I remember this book being like marketed as like it's a feminist Game of Thrones. It's gonna be super feminist and all this stuff, but it's like still dealing with sexism. Like I don't know. I was like expecting something more, you know. I guess. But now we can talk about any the LGBT characters yeah. either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they just one that's like gay people just stopped existing. Well, well, there's a whole thing about there's like a group of people that are in charge of like hunting out gay people and taking care of them or something. I don't know. Like there's a ton of homophobia in the world. Which like without yeah. knowing that extra handmaid's talesy backstory, I was like, so you're one telling one. me in 300 years, like we regress mm -hmm. this much. Apparently. <laughs> Well, well, honestly, like that that president, like, not really that outlandish, but yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. So basically, the ending of the book is that nothing ever happened, mm -hmm. which I hate. I hate mm -hmm. that. none of this. Like, yeah. I, not just in this book, in all things, this is the worst thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, why did you read it? Like, happened. nothing happened. All the stones yeah. come together, and then we like go back in time, and then like everything's happy, peachy. Like, it's yeah, yeah. But it's it also good. jumps forward to like where the characters are. Yeah. So you see how their lives would have gone. And Kelsey's like the only yeah. one that remembers what she did. No one else. Yeah. Knows. Yeah. And like, and that's where I'm like uh, these little history snippets that are written as if they're like after her reign or something being like oh the glen queen like all these things that happen and it's like none of this happened because oh, she reverses true, everything she she doesn't actually ever she doesn't rule for more than like a couple years <laughs> maybe she wrote them who knows <laughs> <laughs> she's like dear diary i was an amazing <laughs> queen <laughs> it's like one where it's like a woman writing about like when she was a child and her grandmother would take her to this like statue of the Glen Queen and her grandmother would be like, you wouldn't exist if it weren't for this woman. And it's like, that doesn't You happen. don't exist, period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the alternate timeline. Like, I don't know. It's mm -hmm. Super weird. Oh, yeah. Not really sure not why, that. not really sure why she decided to combine like 12 different things all together. 
Yeah, I, I hate. I, I was fine with the combining until the thing. yeah the reset button. Though. That is the only thing. So. Yeah, there's no getting around. Why yeah. did I read any of this? Because that just kind yeah. of like reads as like the writer wrote themselves into a corner. There was no way to fix things mm. other than just like resetting everything. You know, like even then, I'd rather you just kill the main character. Yeah. And, and have the world be terrible. <laughs> be like, oh, yeah. no, there's no way to fix it all. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I would have been really interested to see what would happen if the if the the Red Queen would have won. Mm. I think that would. I actually thought that was what was going to happen at the end, and I was like, I'm down for this. I want to know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Like, she's not going to win. Oh my god! And then, like, surprise, she does. But I think that would have been cool. I don't know if she won because I feel like right before the like reset. They were like about to get through the doors and kill everybody. Yeah, which was why I was like, "Yeah, I'm down for this. Like, yeah. I want to know what would have happened. That would be cool." Just said, "Fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> That's an adult book. We can swear it's fine. That's true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the word "fuck" is in this book, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's, that's true. true. <laughs> I was talking about how like the end was really mind fucky, but I was like, I don't know if I can. Can I say that online <laughs> with our audience? <laughs> We used to not, but then we like rebranded, and now we don't just read Kindlet. It's all very confusing. <laughs> we won't Are swear we? next month, or yeah, yeah, next month. We won't swear when we talk about furthermore. <laughs> um, we had a question. Um. Sorry, I'm also eating dinner <laughs> while we chat. Yes, okay, because it's been a day. But Anne Griswold asked, what was your favorite scene? I like the bathroom scene with the assassin. She saved herself yes. and started to discover her power. But I kept asking myself, why does she need to be naked? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like, okay, I get it. But like, it also, it's bath, a, I think okay. it's a, yeah, well, it's just a bath. Do you take a bath with clothes on? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> in case Never an assassin nude. shows up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just in case. In case an assassin comes out of the tile beneath my bathroom. <laughs> I just think it was an interesting, it was like a power complex, right? Like it's, because mm -hmm. when you're naked, you're really vulnerable. So I like that that was the fact that she was vulnerable, but she was like, I'm going to turn this thing around. And then she did. And like, that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. There was like a part there too, where she like considered staying naked because it was obvious that they were all uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, girl, do it. Like, know, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Like Megan said earlier, I really liked the uncle's death. That was a great scene. Yes. Mm. I really, really liked, this is like a cop out because it's multiple scenes, but I really liked all of the scenes with the gate guard. I felt like his motivations were so strong. Like he wanted Allie back and Thorne told him he could oh, get Allie right. back. And like all of the stuff he's like dealing with, like trying to figure out how far is he willing to go for the person he loves more than anything in the world? Mm -hmm. And like, we get to the point in his character arc where he realizes like, even if I get her back, will she ever be able to look at me again because of all the things I've done to try and get her here? Would she have ever wanted it? Like, uh, I get yeah. chills like thinking about him. I would read a whole book from his perspective. <laughs> for I sure. completely forgot about the gate guard and oh my gosh, he was so great. How did I forget about like him? Javel. It's been a while, but like- Javel. Javel. He was great. Yeah, he yes. Was great. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Except one last thing I had marked in my book that we haven't talked about is in one of his scenes when he meets really? Thorn in the pub and there's just like the random like eccentric that blind like, lady really? trope. Yeah, it's like albino too. Yeah, the eccentric, eccentric like albino blind lady, which I feel like is kind of a trope. That was super, super weird. weird. Yeah, super weird. Maybe. And then there's just like randomly the like paragraph where she starts like feel it like fondling herself and it's like really it's random like, why like, is this here yeah she starts doing that and then thorn's like calm yourself and she just stops <laughs> and you're like what was the point of this <laughs> i don't remember this at all it I was super weird the character <laughs> wasn't important like she no. never came back it's we like maybe she comes back in it. later books and I could have, like, maybe gotten over this. her, like, existing and being like, oh, okay, maybe she comes back in later books. But it's just that, like, one part where she just randomly starts, like, yeah. She starts, like, yeah, like, touching herself and everything. And I was like, and it, just, and it ends so quickly, too. It's like, it happens and then it ends and then, like, they move and on to other things done. and never address <laughs> it again. And you're like, okay. Okay. Then. Are you making that up? I don't remember that. No, it's there. Mm -hmm. It is super weird. Yep. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's definitely one of my least favorite read it out scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It's really there cool. were parts that I definitely felt like, like visually and descriptively, and the fact that they didn't really relate to the plot. Like that one felt very like. I want my book to feel Game of Thronesy, and this is a thing that would be in Game of Thrones. <laughs> that was one of those moments where I was like, were you just watching a real weird episode of Game of Thrones when you wrote this scene? Like, why is this here? <laughs> now I really want to know if that character comes back later. Is Thorn I honestly can't remember her? if she does. Her name is Bryn. Or Brynna. Oh, yes, you know what? I think she does back. come back. Yeah, she comes yeah. back. I feared. I was like, she must come back or something. She's gotta be important. Why is this here? I completely. Yeah, no, she does, and she's weird. She get it gets weirder. Like I remember being like, <laughs> WT Like, what is this character? Like, it's very, it's very strange. <laughs> but she does play a role. She she's not just there. She does play a role. It's literally it's like three yeah. sentences, and then he tells her to stop, and then it's never mentioned again. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just like stops, and she like. I don't even think in the rest of the scene, I don't even think they like refer to her at all. <laughs> he doesn't even, he's not even like, I feel like if someone did that in front of me, I would be like staring at them the rest of the time. Like, are you okay? Should I, I, think, like, I think that's uh, part of it too, is that like Javel doesn't like react to it really. It just describes what she's doing. And he's then, like, okay. <laughs> and then Thorne is like, calm yourself, Bryn. Our business here is almost concluded. And it's like the woman subsided, placing her hand back in her lap. Javel's flesh crawled, and then it like moves on to other things. <laughs> like, like I don't know. Like if he'd been like, is she okay? Like anything. <laughs> like, does she need something? Do you guys need to go? Have something like so weird and not have like the character like react or have any thoughts about it. It's strange. Um, I, so think I, I think I think I remember her. Two. Mm. Oh, I like, remember her executed. Okay, sorry. Okay, I remember her being very eccentric and like everyone's like oh well that's Brenna like she's super weird so maybe that's why they're like oh whatever like it definitely felt like Erica Chanson was trying to like portray her as this like weird eccentric character and was like let me throw this in it'll make her look like <laughs> Game of Thrones. Well, yeah, you succeeded <laughs> yeah yeah this book was weird I definitely there were like weird things that I feel like I could have gotten on board for. Like we've talked about the setting a lot, like jumping back mm -hmm. to how that's weird and kind of informs the weirdness of the rest of the series. And it was all things where it was like, I am almost super on board for this. Like this setting yeah. is almost put together enough that I would be super into it. But like for me, it just, it was always just a little short of where I felt like it could have or should have been for me like to be all in. It never quite like executed things as well as I like wanted them to, you know? Like what did, sorry, I'm changing topic a little bit, but like in book one, what did she want aside from like being queen? Like she was like, I want to be Don't a good even queen. Know. Yeah. And like, what did she come against? Through yeah. a lot of it, she wants to be liked. Like that's a lot of, where she screws up in book two. Mm -hmm. Cause it like, I'm just re reading up what happened to Thorne and like eventually he's, he's caught somehow and set to be publicly executed. And she's like super cruel about it because that's what the crowd wants her to do and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like she wants to be adored kind of thing. In book two, doesn't she use her magic stones to like magically make herself prettier and thinner? That's what I read. I don't somewhere know. and I was I like don't oh, cool. remember that <laughs> I read and that in did. a few reviews and I was like oh that's cool <laughs> I feel like in book one it's not quite as much about being liked because she doesn't really come into contact with like the peasants or whatever that often just yet but I think she wants whatever the assassin guy's name is to oh, like her. And, oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. That's very true. And I think even without and, even without interacting with the people, she definitely wants them to like like her. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm not sure about the stones making her thinner because I think she starts to look like the person who she's getting the flashbacks from. Mm -hmm. Oh, like yeah. She I think that's, that's more right. and more like that person. So it's not something she's doing on purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
at that point, Erica Johansson knew that like Emma Watson might be playing her. She's like, I can make this girl look like Emma Watson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of a, a fun problem to have as a writer. Yeah. yeah right. Well, I'm interested to see what else she'll do because this is like her only book, so I'm not really sure what uh, Does what she she'll do in else future projects. When did no, the last book of... come out? Um, Two years ago. Now. Yeah, 2016. Feels like longer. Yeah. I, I like. I remember working in the bookstore when it came out, and like a bunch of us yeah. that were working there were like freaking the hoax. We're like, oh my god, the sequel! Yeah. So at end of twenty sixteen, and she hasn't. There's nothing else on her Goodreads page yet. Mm. Is she on social media? I can't find like a website or anything. So. Yeah. Weird. So her Goodreads page isn't even like a claimed one. I don't think. Oh yeah, on, yeah, yeah. on her Goodreads. Someone asked if she's going to start a new a new book series, kind of like the Tearling, or will you go for another genre? And she said, "More Tearling, always more Tearling." Right now, I can't imagine writing about any other place. I hmm. could imagine. Yeah, I'm like, that's I'm not good. the place I'm... I want to live in. Okay, I don't think you can it. return to that. You yeah, can't. like that's like you literally made it so that you can't. Like, what is unless you do like novellas, which I really don't want to read. Yeah, or like. Um, earlier characters and queens and stuff, but we already know how all that yeah. plays out. Exactly. What is this from? This says she's got... Is this on book one? Just kidding. <laughs> Eight months ago, she said she's at work on two more tierling books, both of which are scheduled to be published in the next four to five years. What? Hmm. But how? I'm... That's Maybe like confusing. you jump back to Before. Tyr himself, or <laughs> you get some of that. Like you see the first pioneers and them starting yeah. up their victory, mm -hmm. which actually I really like. Like, well, like, like modern end, pioneers cool. was kind of cool. At the end of the last book, are they still in the Tierling, but it's just a better place? Because that's what I thought is that it's like the um, Tierling, but it never becomes the terrible place that it became. Yeah, it's like, like what William Tyr envisioned. Yeah, it's like only the very beginning, like couple. I think it's only literally until the character whose point of view you're in dies, and that's like eighty years or something. So you're going like you're going over there, and you're seeing them literally become pioneers in a new. Yeah. No, but place I'm talking about like at completely. the end of the book, like Kelsey's story at the end the, of the, the book. The reset. They're, they're oh, still in the yeah, tearling. Yeah. Like, they're not like back in America. Yeah, no, no, no they're in the tearling. Yeah, yeah. So she could, but it's feasibly write books yeah. in this like better world. Yeah, she could. I guess. I wouldn't want to read them, but you <laughs> <laughs> could. Yeah, so, so in this jumping back, do all the same people like still exist? Like did Carlin did and What's His Butt get to like stay alive? I know her yeah, mother raises all... her. Yeah, they all still exist. Like all the the love interests of the best friends, they're all still there. They're just as other people. And none of them they don't them. remember anything yeah which also doesn't make sense because like if you all this stuff hadn't happened then like half the people wouldn't have been born yeah and like oh like, everybody, like, everybody is there yeah. yeah but i'm pretty sure oh yeah maybe not everybody but but like the vast majority of people yeah. are there her being born is weird to me because like it, it is, doesn't it turn out that her dad is Mern, the guard some no. yeah something like that where so she's the like illegitimate one. he was her father so it's like how did her mother like her mother knew him because he was her guard. <laughs> like, yeah, in the alternate okay. world, how did she just happen to meet the same person like, and have a child with the same person? No, oh, that was weird. Which also is weird. For a book that mentions genetics a lot, Like, her mother and Myrne are both described as being blondes, but she's like dark haired, dark complexioned. And I'm like, genetically, that doesn't really work. <laughs> Blonde hair is recessive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, if you have yeah, you two blonde hair dominant jeans, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm trying to find someone on the internet who reminds me how it all lines, but I have no idea. <laughs> Did we ever figure out how old the bitch is? Because I really want to know. He's like been alive like for like a long time or something. Yeah, he's like he's immortal like, or something. Oh, and he's okay. from like the initial. <laughs> Yeah. It's that trope. He like oh, he yeah, like worked he with the bad guy in the in the initial thing, and now he's like cursed to live for a long time. Yeah, he was like an yeah. enemy of the original Tierling guy or okay. something. Like he was a, an original mm -hmm. pioneer. So yeah. he like still looks young and hot, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
But I don't think they end up together or anything. Like, it's no, no, they don't. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's like at least 10 years older than she is. Like, I remember him being much older and her being like, oh my God, he's so dreamy, like whatever. But I don't think, but it would like, I remember being like, that would have been super weird because he was like 30 I, and she was like I, 19. I know I read that Pin is in love with her, but they never actually get together. And then like- I would have that. Yeah, hard. after the reset, he's like married to somebody else or something. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Not a happy ending for you. No, I loved Penn. Penn was such a. Oh, Penn such was a good, awesome. I, like I kept awesome. waiting for him to be the traitor, though. I was afraid that Erica yeah. was going to do that to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, we like first meet the fetch, and she's like. She says something that made me think that he was like the same age as Lazarus. And then she's like, he's super hot. And I was like, in general, Wait, her what? descriptions of people <laughs> were confusing. Like, <laughs> like when she, she's when also she never meets... met anybody else. Yeah, that's true. true. I know, that's very which true. also, I feel like it's kind of like weird in that, like, she's able to like, I didn't like immediately identify that someone is an alcoholic or like all these things that I'm like, how do you know this when you've only like known two people your whole life? Like, I don't know. You have a lot of know, books, but trying... none of them are medical books. Okay. Yeah, you've never <laughs> yeah, seen an alcoholic person. You've never like seen these things, but you can immediately like interpret them. I don't know. I guess they're trying to make her out as this like amazing queen, you know. Yeah super perceptive and everything but yeah when she like first meets her her guards there's like all these conflicting things where like she talks about how like super hot Mern is and all this stuff but then there's like a line like a couple pages later i think where she's like um thinking about how like they're all like way too old for her to find attractive and i'm like you just mm -hmm. said one of them was really hot <laughs> your dad was super hot that's even yeah. creepier <laughs> yeah. and i also i that reminded me of like a thing that bothered me is these like amazing guards who are supposed to be sworn to the queen and stuff and like supposed to like get her to the castle it's like on their journey every night they just get like super drunk <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and lazarus is like i'm really the one that's here to guard you like you don't have to worry about the rest of them but the rest of them become her guards later <laughs> Maybe they're having a shortage i don't know like, <laughs> all the people going on the slave trade they need a like, sergeant, right. sergeant they're guard. Drunk every night they're like drunk and super loud while yeah. they're being, like, they're like we down. are being hunted. <laughs> Let's drink and sing. And then when like her and her and Lazarus <laughs> are like go down having fun. When they all separate <laughs> to try and like distract the Caden and her and Lazarus like ride off, he's like shouting like jokes after her. <laughs> and you're like, I thought you were being pursued. And you didn't know she because he like specifically calls her lady. Like it's like when he's yelling dolls and dresses lady or something like that. And it's like, I thought that you were trying to trick the Caden so they wouldn't know which one was her. <laughs> <laughs> so many we things got, to talk about, about it was not out. <laughs> like books we don't love definitely makes for a better discussion mm -hmm. yeah definitely books we all love and books we all hate are both <laughs> terrible for discussion <laughs> well i think books we all hate are actually fun because you can just like completely crush something but we don't I do that, that bad like, though yeah we've yeah, never like if it's been a book we haven't liked we've just politely not well, that's like, true yeah we haven't ever like done a, yeah we haven't really done a live chat on a book that we all hate well i mean we have but like not subtly. not, not a super publicly <laughs> we, yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, yeah, we never like outright roasted like every book. Um, I don't want anyone to hardcore no. roast my books. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. This is, like the meanest I've ever been about a book on like a book club. So. And like <laughs> Erica is so successful that I trust that like this won't hurt her feelings. <laughs> so, like, yeah. If she yeah. ever finds out we didn't like her book, she'll be like, "Here's a million people who love my books." So well, yeah. it doesn't like, like it was like 50 book. 50. It was a good discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah. I feel like my yeah, books we all like are just like us fangirling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, yeah, she has like zero social media presence. Oh, huh. uh, we had yeah. a question from. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say there's like a Tumblr and a Facebook page for the series. It looks like it's like official, but like, yeah, mm -hmm. she doesn't have. She doesn't oh, even have a website. Like, she has nothing. Do we know how old she is? She's old school author. She doesn't she's look 40. very old. Yeah. Oh. On huh. Wikipedia, it says she's 40. Yeah. It was like, I saw oh. her picture on Goodreads. So. <laughs> Maybe she's just not, you know, with the times or whatever. Yeah, I probably I mean, don't, you don't have to be. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, 
We had a question that I also want to know the answer to from Ender as well. So why did the Red Queen want to kill Kelsey? Was she the only one who could cause the reset or what? Oh, I, added I, I, I think it was the slave trade thing that like her economy yeah. kind of fell apart with the slaves. And if she has to start pulling them from her own population, that gets... Well, because I assumed from the text, because like they kept talking about how like they had to send a specific number of children or like there was like a minimum for the number of children they had to send. And we know she uses the children for like the blood yeah. sacrifices. So I figured that mm -hmm. was like part of it is that she needed children for that. Cause yeah, it's not like she wanted to kill her uncle when her uncle was cooperating. So it was yeah. this girl is. Yeah. But it, it is like weird that it, I don't know. I guess my question is like, is it just about the slave trader? Is no. there something specifically about Kelsey or about the Tierling? No, like I think it's the Tierling. I think she doing. had ties to like the Tierling family. I think Kelsey eventually finds old portraits of people and the Red Queen as a girl is in them, but I don't remember the relevance. Yeah. So she, there is more. Yeah. So like why she was looking for her in the first place and stuff. But. I'm pretty sure that they're related somehow. Yeah. I think it was like in one of the portraits, there's like a blonde girl like crouching behind something. And then they're like, oh my God, it's the Red Queen when she was young. Like we have to make that connection through the character. Um, the Red but I don't Queen remember is blonde. Like, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I think she's like an aunt or something like that. I don't think she's a sister, but I think she's an aunt or a cousin or something to Kelsey. Yeah. I don't know. But it's something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, is she part of Kelsey's family or is she one of the Tierlings? Because Kelsey isn't a Tierling. Oh, yeah. She's a Raleigh. Because the Raleigh's like succeeded after. Yeah, I don't know. The oh, that's started. right. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. My guess was, would be that she was like a Tierling. Because that would yeah, add yeah. some additional yeah. claim conflict. Yeah, like she's the second sibling of like someone who was a queen or whatever or something like that. It's all very complicated because there's all the people who lived a long time and then yeah. 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 And we're summarizing like thousands of pages <laughs> in yeah. ten minutes. I love someone I'm looking through like question because like the only place she's active is on Goodreads. And someone asked her, someone was like, please hire someone to redesign the covers. The, the current editions are atrocious. <laughs> like authors don't have control over that. Oh, Traditionally no. published authors do not hire people to make the covers. I do really like the redesigned covers, though. Me too. I like yeah, they're really pretty. Yeah. yeah, they're so pretty. Well, we've been going the, for the over. Ones. Yeah, we're good. This is a yeah. yeah. She may be longer chat. Said she definitely will be writing more about the mace. Dope. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But so uh, maybe we could yeah. actually see him being good at his job. But it's like, are we gonna see his like his past, which doesn't actually doesn't exist? exist. <laughs> I feel like when you do a reset, it just makes writing more in the world like very so difficult. Yeah. Maybe they'll do like Will and Grace, where you open up the first book and it's like, remember that dream I had where everything got reset? Oh, God, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I don't. I didn't really I'll like the books. So I don't think I'll read anymore. Yeah, I don't think I'll read any more by her as well. Like, they were interesting, and they definitely entertain me, and they, like, give me a mind fuck at the end, but, like, I don't think I'm going to read anymore. <laughs> all right. I would say this is a pretty good place to hit pause. Thank you all so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. Um, we are back this week with all of our usual videos and jumping into Preptober and all of that fun stuff as we are getting closer and closer to Nano. So, furthermore, is our next book club yes. at the end of, no, the end of October? Yeah. I've wanted to read it for so long, and I'm so happy that I finally have an excuse to. Yes. And on Saturday, we will actually be like doing our quarterly video with announcing book clubs and all of that fun stuff. So, we will see you all then, and see you next Sunday for a write-in. Yes. Next Sunday right. is a write-in. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you again, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.